In this exercise, we'll be looking at facet doming grasshopper, and uh, we're going to generate some polygons on uh, spherical surfaces. Um, this exercise is actually going to use an automatic tool already built in uh, Grasshopper. So all we have to do is understand how to map points on a surface. So I'm going to begin uh, with actually uh, generating a sphere. So the sphere is pretty straightforward. We just type in sphere in the Grasshopper canvas and we can input a plane and a radius and I'm just going to specify 20. Um, as a radius, we can also make it really small and control um, the size of our sphere. Now, one thing to mention is that the surface of the sphere goes uh, in a domain, and that domain uh, actually has a length in two directions that we call as uh, U and V directions. It's it's like a grid, uh, like an X Y grid. But in this sense, uh, we want to evaluate this, the points on the surface. So in that, in that case, we need to specify um, coordinates that are on the surface itself. But Grasshopper has this option where we can actually reparameterize the surface uh, by right-clicking here. So when we reparameterize it, now the domain of the surface would be restricted to 0 and 1. Now, what that means is if I want to evaluate or if I create a point, Let's say I want to create a point X, Y, Z, construct point, and type in evaluate surface. Now I feed in the surface, and for the U and V, I can supply a point coordinate. But in this case, I can just do um, changing X and Ys to show you uh, how the evaluation would go. Now, the beginning point for my surface is actually located at the bottom. Now, when I increment x, you can go. You can see that all it does is rotation. But when I move um, in the y direction, you can see that it goes from the south pole to the north pole. And midway uh, here, if I move x as well, you can see that it's moving horizontally. So x controls the uh, the horizontal domain on the surface, going from zero to one, and y controls the vertical um, vertical direction uh, for u and v. Now, um, I, what I want to do is actually create a bunch of points on the surface. So to do that, uh, I'm actually going to use a command called populate 2D. And for the population, we can specify a region, a rectangle. Now, the default rectangle uh, has a width of 20 and a height of 10. So we can actually specify our, our own um, with the tool rectangle. And for this one, I want to specify a domain construct domain and I want this to go from 0 to 1 in both directions. So a 0 will specify the lowest value of my domain and 1 will specify the highest value. Now my interval goes from 0 to 1 and this is going to specify the x and y of my rectangle. And I'm just going to um, turn these off for now so that we can actually see where the rectangle is. So this is the plane of the rectangle and the output curve is actually located here. So this is the rectangle at the moment. Now if I specify this as my bounding region, you can see that the points are placed inside that rectangle. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is because um, we, I want the evaluated point coordinates to be between 0 and 1. Uh, you can also generate a bunch of random points between x and y, but populate 2D seems to give kind of a nice distribution on the region and we can also control um, the number of these points and all I have to do now is to connect uh, the populate 2D towards the evaluation and now um, these points will be evaluated on the surface we can't actually see them um, until I make the points because the planes um, are too big but these are now evaluated on my sphere and the final step is basically typing up the facet dome. Now the facet dome, all it needs are the points. We don't need an optional uh, boundary box and then we will get the polygons. Now um, in this exercise, what I did was I actually kind of used uh, the areas of the resulting polygons to uh, kind of scale down the regions. And that's actually pretty straightforward. Once we have the uh, the polyline curves, then we can 
use the area command to get their center points and the area values and then I can scale them down uh, using their centroids and I want to scale down the polylines and for scaling factor I actually multiplied the area values with some coefficient so when I multiply let's say uh, these with 0 0.2 and I look at the output as bounds now we can see that the uh, interval is between 0 0.04 to 1.7 now we also want this to be um, between um, 0 and 1 so that we can scale it down so in that sense um, I want to get the bound bounds of the of the areas uh, the maximum is 8.5 and we can actually deconstruct the domain and divide all the values all the area values with the upper threshold of 8.5 now what that does is when we look at the output now my interval goes from 0 0.02 to 1 so that I set the upper boundary to be 1 and we can actually use minimum and maximum here as well to control um, kind of the minimum and maximum scaling values too so if I type in for instance minimum here I get uh, basically I want um, let's say a maximum scaling down of 0 0.8 and now my upper boundary is set to 0 0.8 and if I do a maximum of let's say 0 0.2 I want the lowest scale value to be 0 0.2 and all the other values will be in between and if I feed this in as a scaling factor now you'll see that the larger ones actually um, would um, would scale down more and the smaller ones will scale down less and the final step is basically where we put the small ones and the large ones together so I'm going to do a weave and get the larger polygons here and the smaller polygons here and we need to put these together actually so I'm going to just graft each part so that they will be put into containers of two and I'm going to do a quick loft so that we can get the surfaces now we can also control some of these parameters so if I want the minimum uh, scaling down value so you can see that it's actually controlling these here because they have the smallest areas and this will be controlling the upper values so they're actually located here and once this is done we can actually do a join rep join we can flatten the geometry out and bake it so that we can get one single shape and the cool thing about this exercise is that you can actually get a lot of different variations so basically if you played around with the population you can increase the point count and it will automatically calculate um, new distributions you can also play around with the seed value so that you can get different um, different types of variation different point distribution and you can actually create a lot of um, a lot of variations using this tool um, this will be another variation um, so I I hope you like this uh, tutorial I'll be uploading more the, this week uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already I try to upload uh, videos every other week uh, and thanks for watching